Hello. Was Diana murdered? And if so, who did it? Who were the mysterious strangers seen hanging around the Ritz that night? Was Henri Paul really drunk? What of the mysterious white Citroen or Fiat with the big dog that zigzagged out of the tunnel on that fateful night? So many questions, but tonight we will answer all of them. My name is Simon Regan, the founding editor of Scallywag magazine. I truly believe that a plot to assassinate Princess Diana is entirely feasible. My name is Sharon Campbell and I'm a writer. Like many of the general public, I don't believe that accidents just happen to major league players like the Princess of Wales. My name's Pete Jarvis and I don't believe Diana died as a result of the car crash in Paris last year. My name is John King. And I'm an investigative journalist. My information is that Diana was assassinated for political and constitutional reasons. My name's Charlotte Cox and I'm an actress. I believe that the thought of the royal family having blood tie connections with one of the largest arms dealers in the world sealed Diana's fate. My name is Jeff Steinberg. I'm an editor with Executive Intelligence Review magazine in the United States. I believe it's time for the French magistrate to come forward and announce that he is now pursuing a murder investigation rather than a traffic accident. On the question of murder, uh, I think that uh, there's two things that, that are already fairly well established and acknowledged about the events that took place in Paris on August 31st. Number one, uh, there was a second car involved. Mm. That car has disappeared from the face of the earth. The identity of the driver is unknown. And uh, to be aware of that and not at least leave open the very strong possibility that you're dealing with some kind of vehicular homicide, which is a form mm. of murder, uh, is a mistake. Plus, she didn't go to the nearest hospital, did she? she went there were to five that other one. hospitals yeah. closer, one yes, of which is surely. the best hospital available. So do you think that the French know where the car is and no. are covering it up? No, not necessarily. So I think MI, I mean, if I'm allowed to say, I think MI6 is certainly involved, um, our intelligence. I don't think it's anything to do with um, our politicians or the royal family because I think Big Brother is much higher and much more powerful than they are. And I suspect that um, happening in France was very convenient because I just don't think they could have, uh, A, stopped a crowd from forming, mm -hmm. and B, she would have been airlifted straight away to the right. nearest hospital. Right. Uh, and so I sort of feel... That's why yeah, France was chosen. Mm -hmm. But Sean, you believe that, that um, she wasn't killed in the tunnel, she was killed beforehand? Yeah, I believe she was... Well, I'm not sure about beforehand was she crushed. I mean, there is the pri uh, uh, the Sion Priory uh, conspiracy site. I, I think, actually, she was killed at Salpetria. I've been looking into the history of it. Now, it started out in 1662 as a prison to dispose of the dispossessed. Then it turned into an asylum. And um, by 1882, Jeanne Charcot, the hypnotist, was working there. He was the man in charge. Now, what it had was an exclusively female uh, inmate population, and he did hypnotism experiments on these people. He um, mind-controlled them. He tried to separate them from their souls, from their sanity. And in time, he was joined by, uh, who was it, Cole Young? Clement Freud, oh, not Clement Freud, sorry, <laughs> Sigmund, Sigmund Freud, mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> Giles de Tourette, who was actually shot and wounded by one of the female patients one day. He said, well, you've separated me from my sanity. You've hypnotized me too many times. Now, I'm wondering if those hypnotism experiments of Charcot's went on to become the forerunner for the CIA mind control program and also the KGB mind control programs, because my idea is that Henri Paul was actually... Um, mm. hypnotized or nobbled psychologically in some way because the Salpetria do do neuropsychiatry experiments also with psychotropics. Yeah. So, so, so the Ritz, so the photographs in, in the Ritz, that was a Diana look-alike? 
I like that's it exactly. I think it was a Diana lookalike because there's also a, a Dodie lookalike, Mohammed Said, who's serving two years in a Canadian prison for impersonation. Um, but don't you think Al Fayed himself would have known? Because it wasn't yeah, in the Ritz at the time. Yeah, this is what But I, I think Al Fayed knows perfectly well what is going on. Um, in, in the days after the the accident, he looked grief stricken, but he also looked guilt stricken. And I think yeah. he you're, knows you're what's happened. You're actually talking about an absolutely super, super conspiracy. Absolutely, yeah. I, it requires you know. a lot of involvement, a lot of planning. Yeah. But put it this way, does it matter what type of conspiracy? The fact that I think we're discussing it here and now is because we're very unhappy with being told that it was an accident. Absolutely, so, when it was No matter accident. how it or yeah. when it happened. Well, in a sense, uh, my feeling is that the, the devil's very much in the detail and mm. that there are a great deal of transparent, visible, known details. There are eyewitnesses who've come forward. Uh, there's At forensic times evidence too, right? I mean, you've you've basically got, I've I've tracked down and interviewed some of them, but seen the uh, statements made by about a dozen witnesses who each had a kind of a snapshot view mm. of events, say in the 60 seconds or several minutes before the crash, and then the several minutes after the crash. I'm struck by the consistency of the pieces of the picture that they tell. Mm. The car, the Mercedes, was under attack by several other automobiles and motorcycles. Um, so the Fiat or Citroen was just one of them. Right, and I, it seems to me credible that, uh, I, I don't think that they're wrong on the fact that it was a Fiat. I think the level of forensic testing that's been done and... Yeah, the Citroen came up much later. Yeah, right, and and there were other cars involved. Yeah. I think the, uh, as I recall, Trevor Reese Jones does remember that <laughs> there was a white car that was trailing the Mercedes. Then how did it get in front? Didn't it come around the other way? Well, I, th I think that what we don't know, at least what I don't know, uh, is what precisely happened in that, say, 15, 30 second period. Mm. Uh, that final stretch of the road mm. along the Seine mm. River. Clearly a number of other cars were right on the tail of the Mercedes. There's one eyewitness account by Francois Levy saying that a car sped by the Mercedes, cut in front of it, jammed on its brakes, and might have been, this may have been the Fiat. I mean, those details are simply not, to my knowledge, fully okay. known. But there are many transparent reports of people who saw different things. Uh, there were uh, a lot of closed circuit TV footage taken, which the French police seem to believe that every closed circuit TV in central Paris was not functioning well, no, that, during that 10-minute period. That is one of the period. most suspicious things of all time because right. it was the only time in the whole history of the traffic system in Paris that all 28 Weren't. Right. video traffic controls were not working. Right. From the time they left the Ritz, which is the last thing we got, there were three in, in the tunnel itself that were not working, they right. were not functioning. They had not functioned for, for about 20 minutes before they left the Ritz. Right. Funnily enough also, and I've researched this extremely well, there was tremendous traffic um, interference on radios. Mm. The radios were cut out mm -hmm. entirely. Um, the kind of white noise on, on radios, is that what you're saying? Sorry? Sound interference. Yeah. No, no, they, it was cut out. Just nothing? Yeah. Um, my, my actual source was a, a radio buff. Um, a voyeur who was actually sitting under the Eiffel Tower um, and he listens into the police or whatever and all of a sudden just at about two minutes before the crash all radio was cut stopped. Out. Now so that is highly again? suspicious and the police have not answered it. I've asked them in Paris right. and I've right. asked them in this country right. and the, uh, I've asked the Fayad family mm -hmm. And no one has got an answer for that. Right. We're also forgetting the fact that the car itself uh, was broken into about four weeks beforehand. Yeah. And, you know, my theory being MI6 or whatever, super intelligent people, whatever, getting together. Super um, establishment, yeah. Yeah, super mm -hmm. establishment. Uh, basically, it's not attributed remote to control. Be justifiable. <laughs> but remote control, you know, mm -hmm. there was one chap, it was the chap who survived, uh, basically his seatbelt was on. Right. And um, they're actually talking. didn't put it on until after the Place de la Concorde, which is about approximately 50 seconds before the tunnel. Right, right. well, the seatbelts mm -hmm. could easily, you know, remote control could easily sort of turn them, take them well, off while they're crashing. Because that particular Mercedes is, is, is 
digitally controlled. Yeah. Mm. And, and you could have sat from the bank. They all had their seat belts on, but then remote controlled. They Especially were taken off Diana. Jones's, which was then remote controlled, put on. Yes. Well, no, I don't know about remote control to put it on. I don't well, know no, that you, could you could control the steering, you could control the brakes, yeah. you could control from, uh, from a, 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 a <laughs> computerised <laughs> so station. W so why was Trevor Lee Jones allowed to survive? Because he put his seatbelt on. And also, mm -hmm. going back to your um, mental sort of mm. brainwashing number, couldn't he have perhaps been the, the plant, if you like? I mean, mm. it's all for to say it. Um, you know, without him knowing, his mind could have perhaps been affected. Exactly. Because they're trained to, to take viewing. it off. In an accident, uh, someone who's a bodyguard is actually trained to take theirs off, not to put it on. Um, and he is SAS. Ex -SAS That's true, ex -SAS, SAS. You know? But the question well, is, parachute. why were they still on the wrong road? I mean, they should have been on the road going above the armour underpass, turning up George V Avenue, Far but they were actually many. chaperoned mm -hmm. under the underpass the best, by the best, home. The, the best explanation I've heard is that, uh, I mean, remember that the Mercedes was being uh, chased. There were a couple of vehicles and motorcycles, and one could presume it was predominantly the paparazzi, hmm. but uh, um, until we know who was driving the Fiat, uh, <laughs> why it is that uh, it disappeared from the face of the earth. Uh, what else do we know about the Fiat? We know that there was a big dog in the Fiat, don't we? No, we don't. Actually, it, I didn't it, know that. <laughs> someone from a block of flats outside the tunnel said that they thought there was a dog in there. It, I, I don't think people driving it in also, no, 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 Because I've got to say, that, that filled me with some doubt, because I thought mm -hmm. if you were going to assassinate somebody, you don't take a big dog with you, because dogs are unpredictable. Mm. They might jump on you if when you're in the tunnel. If we're trying to argue about how it was done, and if, in fact, the Fiat Uno, the white Fiat Uno, was involved, um, then it, it, it could be significant that um, it could have been done by ray gun or it could have been done by all sorts of things, in which case um, a dog would be insignificant. Uh, it, would, it would look like a dog or it would be made to look like a dog or whatever. So it was, so it was a kind of non-dog thing? Well, I, I personally don't a think projection. that anyone out on an assassination plot would, would take a dog with them. Well, that's what I think, Wasn't because they're unpredictable. Th both the eyewitness accounts of, of two or three people who seem to have been close to the scene seconds before the crash, this uh, British secretary, Brenda Wells, who uh, gave some statements both to the French police and to the media shortly after the crash. Uh, the forensic tests on the car uh, have shown some interesting things. Number one... Uh, the confirmation, uh, and I think they're fairly specific about the fact that it was a Fiat Uno, White. probably manufactured between 1984 and 87. It was a turbo model, uh, which is, by the way, faster mm. and has a greater acceleration than the Mercedes. People might tend to just automatically assume that a Fiat up against the Mercedes is going to be a slower, smaller, less powerful car. Um, now, uh, as I understand it, there's also been questions raised by some of the medical tests and the forensic tests suggesting that the um, airbags on the Mercedes had uh, Blew up detonated uh, prior to the uh, main crash uh -huh. head-on impact. Um, again, I think that there are, that there's lots and lots of uh, details, eyewitness information that is out there and is being suppressed. I mean, I, I've spoken to several witnesses who were horrified at the treatment that they received from the French after the fact. The French want this to be a garden variety. I don't think it's just drunk the French. Driving. You keep saying the French. I'm sorry. I think it's Big Brother, and that's a conglomerate of individuals mm -hmm. from the all the power. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. well, I think it's got to do with the arms race. I mean, you know, we make money. You know, this country makes money, doesn't it? Yeah. Selling mm -hmm. arms to the Arab states to yes, fight the Israelis. Yeah. It's all oil yeah. And that's the thing. Right. Now, Diana, in her naivety, if you like, and they mm -hmm. tried to suggest that she was very naive with all this landmines number. Not really. But unfortunately, she's also in a very powerful position without her realising it. Right. I think um, uh, motive is a very important thing to try True. and establish. Yeah. Well, if you learn anything yeah. from watching JFK, it's what Donald mm -hmm. Sutherland said. It's not the who or the how, right. but the why. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. And what, what uh, got me intrigued in all of this in the first place really was that uh, I'm an investigative journalist and over the years I've built up a few sources and contacts within the intelligence community. Now exactly one week prior to this event on the 23rd of August last year I received some information that led me to believe, should we say, that this 
very event was about to happen within a very short period of time. So my, I, 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 I've been able to, over the past months, uh, for myself anyway, corroborate and, and, and substantiate that information. Are you able to tell us what it is? is? I'm reluctant to talk too much about it on a program like this because I can't. You can always talk about it in broad strokes. Well, that's what I am talking about it in it's very broad strokes. Slightly narrower yeah. strokes. Um, than slightly. Well, one of my intelligence sources intimated that this very incident was about to happen, and the reasons given were both political and constitutional. Mm. They were there for, for my Red information ties. was that there was a link between. Uh, the US and Britain, there was a, a kind of a joint operation at some level somewhere, I don't know what level, but there was CIA and MI6 involvement. Mm, mm. Now, the, the American involvement largely was, which is why I jumped in there, to do with the landmines issue. Oh, yeah. Not just the landmines issue, but oh. Diana, remember, was someone very mu uh, much like JFK and like Martin Luther King. She was one of those very rare people, whatever you thought about her, she had a tremendous charisma. She could mobilise public and national opinion like that. And she opened her mouth. And, and, and well, yeah, yeah, I think that the frightens the a lot of people in it. certain areas. I mean, you, we must realise the kind of conspiracy, the kind of people that Diana was confronting by standing up and making a stand on, on the landmines issue. And there's a lot of information to say that she may be moving on to, to other issues. <laughs> and I don't know whether or not it matters whether or not she was, but um, they were already talking about her being pregnant before she was killed. This, this information came to me before she was, mm -hmm. if you like, I mean, I think she was assassinated, but before she died. Now, the point is, you're then dealing with the fact that she was going to uh, produce an, a boy or girl who was basically going to be the half-brother or sister Wait. to Prince William and Prince Harry, mm -hmm. and therefore a huge embarrassment to the royal establishment because um, al Fayed's uncle is the, one of the largest arms dealers in the world. Mm -hmm. I should I say, by the way, that uh, <coughs> one of the things that I found very chilling, the uh, Sunday Mirror of August 31st, 1997, in other words, the day of the crash, yeah. Uh, published a story uh, which was obviously written before yes. Diana's death uh, saying that there was panic within the royal family over the relationship with Dodi Fayed and yeah. in a certain sense the relationship between the Spencers and the Al Fayed family generally because yeah. they were both critics of the way that the Windsors were running the structure yes. of the monarchy mm -hmm. and uh, there was to be a meeting up at Balmoral Castle in Scotland several days later at which the head of MI6 was to present a formal dossier on Dodi Fayed and apparently the person who was most adamant about breaking up the relationship between Diana and Dodi Fayed was Prince Philip. Could, could I possibly get back to the landmine thing because sure. I think it's, it's incredibly relevant because all the conspiracy theories seem to um, think that landmines had a, a, a large part in it. I personally don't think so. I agree with you. Um, mm. Because um, the people who manufacture the landmines are on huge contracts to clear them. Yes. And they're making a lot more money clearing them than they are producing, producing them. Correct. Um, but Diana on the, in the Red Cross was a loose cannon and she yes. was becoming a hell of a pacifist. Like what would she come out with and She next? was going to all the war zones in the world. She was going to Bosnia, she was going to Africa, etc. And she, she was becoming a very dangerous person if you were into arms or into yeah. oil or if you were into the two together. She was stepping on toes quite innocently, yes, I agree, that, yeah. but um, she, she, she caught on to things that were taboo with the, with the super establishment, like AIDS. AIDS was a tremendously taboo subject, sure. you know. Arms, wars, she was going to Bosnia. Now, the French and the Americans were supplying both sides. I, I think we should continue with this discussion, certainly. But I want to go back, um, Sharon, uh, I want to go back to the history of the, of the tunnel, of the mm. Pont de l'Alma, because that's quite interesting, isn't it? Well, it's true. There's a lot of legend associated with it, such as sacrifice in the Merovingian area. Now, I was looking at the, the history of the Merovingians. Where did they come from? Apparently, 
in the uh, Indian tradition, they have the Brahmin caste. Now, these Brahmin are the highest caste that there is. And apparently, they landed in, um, well, according to the Rig Veda, they landed on Mount Mero, uh, and they all got out this shiny spacecraft, and they became known as the Brahmin. And the Brahmin, through the Indo-European uh, religions, etc., gave birth to the Merovingian caste of king, kings in France. Now, they may have been the ancestors of uh, Diana, and there may have been sacrifices at the Pont de Armour, but I haven't found any real evidence to tie it in with that place. It seems more that the sacrifice would have happened further up at the Ile de City, the uh, Notre Dame area, further up the Seine. So I'm not sure about this legend and myth. It seems to me that this is an accident which has been orchestrated mm and that it's been covered up like a William Burroughs story. It's full of subterfuge and images superimposed one on top of the other. It's got myth, it's got legend, it's got mind control. I mean, where is the truth? It's also got yeah. fear, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it plays yeah. on fear, it thrives yeah. on fear. It's like the NWO, you know, if you're afraid of them, it gives strength to them. Mm -hmm. But it's like, um, yeah, Diana had met a lot of connections. Uh, she was with Liz Dole in Washington. She'd been to Clinton's party, which was at Martha's Vineyard, uh, hosted by Catherine Graham, chairman of the Washington Post. I mean, I don't think Diana was as innocent, you know, yeah. as is made out. I think she, she knew a lot. Someone like, for instance, Diana, who you want to kill, mm -hmm. and you've got the resources and the professional capabilities to do it, you're going to probably have multiple teams working on different but kinds of situations. How did anybody know they were going to go to that tunnel at that time? Well, then that leads back to unless they were following, or unless they were controlling the car, well, they, were they were they chaperones or whatever. The tunnel. Mm -hmm. In fact, the paparazzi—I yeah. well, don't think were paparazzi. I think they were trained officers. We published in uh, in EIR magazine uh, back uh, about oh, I guess uh, December of 1997, uh, a series of uh, photographs that we got from some sources in Paris, uh, which were some of the closed circuit TV camera footage converted to stills uh, taken in the Place Vendôme and in the area around the Ritz Hotel from some of the cameras in adjacent buildings. And um, there were very definitely uh, about six or seven people who were in the area, who were not part of the paparazzi, because most of them are well known, not guests at the hotel, not French intelligence, uh, but were very clearly there on surveillance for a couple of hour period prior to the departure of Diana and Doty from the hotel on the fateful well, CNN's night. CNN's um, theory was that they were all, they were all CIA. <laughs> well, as I say, uh, right now what I do know is uh, we've got photographs of some of these guys. Mm. Uh, nobody has been able to say who they are. So these, these mysterious strangers who are in the photographs, what, what right. were they doing in the photographs? Can you, can you, can you clear Well, they were out in the the, the, the ones I've seen, they, they were out in the plaza in front of the hotel. They were standing sort of at the edge of the crowd. One guy wearing a t-shirt and a baseball cap, another guy just a sort of a street jacket. They were there for about a two hour period from shortly after Diana and Doty arrived back at the hotel from his apartment. They had been planning to have dinner at a restaurant and canceled that because Paparazzi were staked out at their apartment. I mean, the, the level of harassment and threats that they were under during that entire day from the minute they arrived in France is pretty dramatic. The Harrods tapes, um, the videos, I've had them analyzed professionally. And um, the You mean the Ritz Hotel? Yes. Uh, of Diane and Dave yes. coming video, out. Which yes. are the, yeah. virtually the only videotapes because the traffic system videos were not right. working. Whenever Henry Paul, the driver, is on tape, the frames don't match. Yeah, so they've either been speeded up or they've been slowed down. Been enough. I There's was using a video mm -hmm. of it, okay, from what television. Do you mean by this, well, either they, you know, either someone or the Ritz Hotel or whatever were trying to give a false impression of his behaviour Im immediately before he got to the to car. To make him look more drunk. Or less drunk. Mm -hmm. or less I drunk. can't believe less Diana. Drunk. Do you think he was drunk? Because I, I thought that, that the general perception here is that he wasn't looking drunk. I don't think he was drunk. Because no, I don't think he was. Looking at that video, he seemed to be quite alert. 
I mean, for someone who was supposedly three times over the limit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And well, if they're going to adopt the... the uh, We're also dealing sort of, with a yeah. mother here who's mm -hmm. going to see her son the very next day, and she would not have put herself in danger. Lord Rhys Jones have allowed him to take the car. Exactly. It doesn't make sense. No, let's go to the details. I mean, again, this is where I'm deeply disturbed at the way the French have played fast and loose with the truth here. Um, the French refused to allow independent autopsies yeah. of Henri Paul. Uh, they refused to allow the members of his own family to interview the doctors who did the post-mortem exams. Finally, under enormous pressure, all they agreed to do in return for Henri Paul being buried without further tests was they released the written report that was done by the people who did the blood test. But also... Those reports, let me just, because it's very important, those reports were passed to certain very well-respected forensic pathologists. And, and what they found was that the, um, the tests that were done, the blood tests in particular, which is the only basis for claiming this three times over yeah. the legal alcohol limit, were so badly botched that you can't well, draw any conclusions. Mm -hmm. They they to start off with. They, they, the they, took, they took the samples from the chest yeah. cavity, Another which is a contaminated up. area because mm -hmm. the various vital organs burst open. You had mm -hmm. some combination of blood and lots of other well, chemicals. Well, I have also and gained a, a, a doctor's testimony uh, saying that uh, for someone who is a habitual drinker, mm. anyway, to, to actually register three times over the limit, He'd be staggering about all over the place. Yeah, here. Right. Never mind one and a half bottles of wine. Yeah. It would be more one and, 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 and a half bottles of whiskey. When he left, right. and he came out five minutes before the royal party left, and said we'll be leaving in five minutes. Mm. And they attest that he was absolutely sober. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure he was. Right. But your suggestion earlier, Simon, was that uh, he was he was drunk, and they doctored No, I it. wasn't suggesting that he was. I was suggesting that one way or the other, um, the videotapes that were released from the Ritz didn't match. Mm -hmm. the, and um, according to one witness in the in the Savoy in the in the Ritz that I have interviewed, he he had had two Ricards. Right. Which is that's acknowledged. Yes, exactly. It, right. that's it's, not it's a very potent drink. Mm -hmm. I know it well. <laughs> <laughs> if I, if ever I'd had a son, I'd have called him Ricard. Mm -hmm. um, but but in fact, the first theory that I had was that his drink may have been spiked. Now, if in fact you take a grapefruit juice, it doesn't work with Prozac. It, 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 it reacts in a very chemical way, which he was having. He was he was on a course of Prozac. And into mm. um, a, a fruit juice, you could have put, poured pure alcohol very, very easily um, without, it, have without tasting it. No, it's tasteless and it's colourless and it's everything else. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm but sure that if in fact it was on Ricard, um, the story didn't quite hold up. So I, I've got the feeling he probably was a bit tiddly. I'm sure there are uh, 101 ways to, to make uh, someone appear to, to be three well, times over the limit. You if you have a very highly organised uh, operation yeah. of, of that it. nature <laughs> happening. I'd like to go back to what Sharon was saying just now about the Merovingian line. Because although it sounds a little bit strange right. and weird, it's very important, I, find, I think, because it, talking about bloodlines, the Merovingians are also um, of legend, and also there's a lot of historical evidence to say that they're the, the direct lineal descendants of the Judaic... Uh, royal dynasty, mm. including, uh, as we know, uh, Solomon and, and Jesus, and taking that uh, that that bloodline on, and also just to, to interject there that we know that the Catholic Church usurped uh, the, the the Merovingian um, right to rule, if, if if you like, with when they assassinated King Dagobert II in 670, 679 A.D. And taking that bloodline on uh, as it crossed over to England and eventually uh, appeared again in, in, the, in the Stuart dynasty, that's really where, where the House of Windsor and the House of Spencer come into the frame, is with the Stuart dynasty. And it's interesting that the, the, the House of Windsor family tree is seen as the royal and, and the legitimate bloodline up to this point, up to, up to today. And Diana's bloodline was, was, was a, the bastard illegitimate child of, of Charles II or one of them and that's that's the tree we've got and there's another Lady Diana Spencer uh, around the, the 16th or 17th century who was it was planned for her to marry the, the, the then Prince of Wales uh, Prince Frederick and uh, as soon as the the Prime Minister Sir Robert Walpole of the time uh, found out about that. He stepped in and prevented that marriage. So it's just an interesting uh, so, angle on that. So you think that Diana, you can trace Diana's bloodline 
right back to Jesus. Well, there's some. There's a lot of historical evidence to, to say that you mm -hmm. can. Yes, and and, mm -hmm. and but and Prince Charles is too. Both both yeah. families. But I don't want to be a naysayer, but but I was always under the impression that Jesus died childless. Well, a lot of people are under that impression, but that's because we've been fed uh, a religious um, a load of bullshit, frankly. When and we haven't looked at the the the, the plain historical facts. We haven't looked at uh, history. We've looked at religion. We, we've. Well, one thing that's clear is that there, there definitely was a challenge to the credibility of the House of Windsor, which Diana was a pivotal player in. Um, she had directly said that uh, Prince Charles was really not qualified to be king. There were various implications in that. <coughs> that one could have been a possible personal reason, though, couldn't it? I mean, personally, he wasn't qualified. It's possible that she actually found some evidence to corroborate that, because there was that statement she came out with a uh, matter of days before she, the act of accident i'm going to say something that will Much shock the world i thought that was her pregnancy would that be yeah. anything she that? Yes, yes she got out of a yacht and as she got mm -hmm. out of the yacht she actually said oh i've mm -hmm. got a much bigger and surprise she made, she made various phone calls from the rips that night that was almost a threat, wasn't it, the way she said it? And I was dying to know what it was. And I but surely the blood in a matter of sample days. would have yeah. shown whether she was pregnant or not. What we haven't addressed is the fact that um, the Payan family have got, in their own right, incredible enemies. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not only in the British establishment, you've got to understand that although the British um, followed the French in being very Arabist in their foreign policy, um, e Egypt was not Arabist in their sense of the word. They were they were basically wogs. This right. is this is what he called Correct. himself. He said yeah. they think of me as a wog. Right. Mm. Okay. The Egyptians, dating right back to Sadat and um, even before that, um, yes. over the Suez Crisis, right. the Egyptians in the Foreign Office, in the eyes of the Foreign Office, and if you say Foreign Office, you can you can say MI6 yeah. in, in the same word. Um, the Egyptians were absolutely the asshole end of the world. Right. 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 Um, so there were natural enemies in the super establishment of the West. Mm -hmm. um, there were natural enemies. Um, especially um, dating back to the Harrods fiasco, um, which was backed by Libya. Mm -hmm. there, were, there, there were natural enemies of the Fiat family, of the Fiat family. Diana might have been just indispensable. Mm. So Dodie might have been was, after her. So you think like that Dodie was, the real, was mm. possibly the real target? It's quite possible. Yeah. I honestly believe that the British establishment was quite capable of turning a blind eye if and when they knew such a, a, an act was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Do you think it was just a very fortuitous coincidence that Diana and Dodie were going to be in the same car together on that night? Mm. No, I don't. I think it was planned for I months. Think they mm -hmm. were very serious about and each other, weren't they? And I think yeah. uh, before be sure. it was almost like I, I could imagine that she would like go out with him to annoy her family. Uh, but then I think she genuinely fell in love with this chap and and I think Perhaps he with did each with other. her. I mean, there are yeah. very serious implications to the British constitutional monarchy. Having to deal with that. If Diana and, and Dodie do end up having getting a child. married. And even just getting married, let alone having a child. I mean, the future this, king having a, 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 a possible yeah. Muslim mother. So it's because Dodie was a Muslim rather than Dodie was a member of the Al-Qaeda Yeah, I think we were, we're, yeah. what I was talking about a bit earlier about the whole bloodline thing, it, the, the, the importance of it is the fact that the House of Windsor you know, represents the head, if you like, of the British Blue oligarchy. Blood. You know, we, right. we, I, I don't separate the super establishment from the royal family. I think the royal no, family heads it up, yeah. but I don't and think I think that I think the that there are upcoming upstart, so there are upstart Muslim mm -hmm. yeah, families that with the with the oil oil rich yeah, nations yeah. these days that are that yeah. are moving in. Yeah. Yeah. If they'd the been Saudi Arabian, it would have been forgiven. That's my point. Well, possibly, Egyptian yeah, I agree, yes, something else. Well, quite yeah. possibly. Mm -hmm. But either, either way, whichever way it is, mm -hmm. the fact is that it wasn't. And uh, mm -hmm. Do you think, did Diana know that she was a direct descendant of Solomon and Jesus? I have no idea. Mm. I have no idea at all. Surely. I don't think, that, I mean, no, it's, not, I it's not the literal side of it. It's, it's, a, it's a lot to do with symbology and, and Masonic mm. sub symbology. If we're yeah. talking about cover-ups, then you can bet your life there's some level a very high echelon Masonic involvement mm. in this. Mm. I don't know, Strad, because you've obviously got names that you could name if you wanted to, haven't mm. you? And you've got names too, Simon, that you could name. And, and have, have the I two. I have known them. 
Well, well you have been, but you don't want to name them on this program for some Well, mine are named as well, but I deposited them with my solicitor. Yeah. 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 Have the two of you spoken yeah. quietly, maybe upstairs, no. over subwoofers? No. So you don't know whether you've got the same names? I'm no. sure we have. Are you certain that you have? No, I'm sure. I, I, I was wondering because it, ones, yeah, I suspect really? we have different yeah. ones. Right. I was wondering if you could possibly, uh, because I'm, you know, second best to actually knowing what the names themselves are um, would be to find out if you've got the same names. That would give me a certain free sign. So I was wondering if you could maybe even whisk, or even write it on a piece of paper and hand it um, secretly no. to Simon, or no, because whisper to Simon, saying so yes or no. Uh, we're talking about people who are putting their, not just their careers, Next. but their, their lives on the line. This is a very, very sensitive subject. We're mm. talking about the possible assassination of the Princess of Wales. Mm. And if that is a, the situation, then there is a, an extremely high-level conspiracy and cover-up in mm. operation to prevent that, that information reaching the public domain. Mm. So there's no way I'm, I'm, I'm about to, on a programme like this, name sources or even their rank or file or where they may be or whom they might work for uh, and, and compromise their, their careers and so their lives, their, their security. Did you not hear of a woman that believes she saw someone walk out of the tunnel yes. after the accident yes. that Running looked to a very that much like Diana? Mm. She said... I, I, yeah, I heard I this I saw and she, she, said it, this, yeah. she said that the woman ran from the tunnel, got into a car, and she said it looked very much like Diana. Now, that wasn't widely published. I managed to pick it up. Um, I think it, it was a, an interview, perhaps on radio or Would something that like that. For a CBS now, report. Yes. Just yes, a few I think hours it was. After. Yes. Yes. Did she I say remember that. Now, where she went. She said, "Run to a car," mm. and that's it. I remember now, her saying that she saw was, out of the car staggering. Yeah, and the fact that this woman was actually reported that. running yeah, away, but no. now this woman's reported that, and this woman herself has, has actually go gone missing. She's mm -hmm. French, isn't she? Yes. Yeah, she's French. Hiding, yeah. So do you think Diana faked her own death, or do you think she was, um, she found herself I think as, card, as, as a target? And, and so I think, you know, listening to what, what the other people have to say here, I think she was just caught up in a web, yeah. and that probably they were after Dodie, and not Diana. She happened to mm. be there at the time. And I think that maybe she has been spirited away in if some way, so that they've... If conspirators got hold of the Mercedes, they wouldn't have known whether Princess Diane was in there or not. Yes, yes, exactly. It you does know. mean well, for the rest of her life, life she'll have to be mm -hmm. in hiding, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, yes. And yes, where do you think she is? Um, there's so many facts around. America? Around, the th yes, yes, America is very, mm. be quite something there. Yeah. There's so many facts around the actual incident. Mm. I mean, there's, there's that, one, so, w that one witness I just talked about. We never saw there's her also in the coffin, did we? No, you, no, no sure. one ever. No yeah, one actually see, see a body. No one has actually seen oh, yes, the a body as such. Of pictures. Now that's another thing. Of the crash. The, yeah. the size of the crash. That's, that's the other thing that I'd, I'd, I'm not too sure of. I mean, someone who is drunk and driving. Now, surely, with, especially with the people he was driving anyway, surely he would be taking a bit more care, despite the fact he's got paparazzi chasing him. To, to be doing 120 mile an hour okay, in that that's kind one of the area. First yeah. The French, yeah, the French wild, police, yeah. the French police, not just simply said the car was going at 120 miles an hour. They said, we knew this because the speedometer read 120 miles an hour. Yeah. We interviewed uh, executive intelligence review. Interviewed the safety engineers at Daimler Benz, and the very first thing they said was impossible. Whether it was a 30 mile or 130 mile an hour crash the speedometer goes back to zero. So this was a just premeditated lie by the John French. John Stalker mm -hmm. said he's mm -hmm. right, as exactly. well that it was 60 miles an hour. Right, and, yeah. a, and a, an expert from the University of Birmingham just did a computer simulation. Yeah, the crash engineers at Daimler-Benz mm -hmm. volunteered from day one to come down to France to work with the French police to help diagnose the car. Now, who would be better qualified than the people who designed the safety the systems? And, right. mm -hmm. and they were given a cold shoulder and said, no mm -hmm. thanks, stay away. In fact, they were told that mm -hmm. they better not come down under any other venue and try to interfere with the investigation. Yeah. So why would they say that the car was going 120 miles an hour? Because they're what creating they? a fiction. Yeah. They create, the fiction the is, convince the fiction oh, is yeah. high speed mm -hmm. drunk driving, mm -hmm. That's the sole cause of the famous following. people, but a garden variety traffic accident that occurs every day. Mm -hmm. um, there were also another very critical lie. The lies that come up, come up around some very important issues. 
we were told initially that the reason that it took an hour to get Diana into the ambulance, forgetting that it took 43 minutes to drive four miles with no traffic on the street, but they claimed that she was pinned in the back seat because the compartment was crunched up and they had to do all sorts of things to get her out. He had visions of Texas chainsaws in there. Again, a total lie. <coughs> the right side, the passenger, uh, the right side of the rear of the compartment was not severely damaged. People were able to open the door. This guy, Rat, was leaning over her when some of the other early eyewitnesses arrived. So again, you've got stories that were put out, never in the form of a press release, never in the form of a press conference, but leaks to the usual French media uh, from police sources, putting out information that was just categorical falsehoods to create, again, this mm. overall impression. It was drunk driving, maybe complicated by a high-speed chase with the paparazzi, but it was a garden variety incident. Mm. And we're talking here about a lot of evidence that says something quite mm. different. Yeah, and the other thing that struck me after, after the event, when um, Clinton got up and addressed the nation and sort of pronounced that she actually died, etc. That guy was grinning all over his face. He was grinning like a Cheshire cat. He can't help it. He knew something. He obviously knew something. He wasn't playing that straight at all. So who else do you think knows that she's still alive? I would say, obviously, there are members of the royal family that will be Not in the on children. this information. Not the children. Um, I would possibly, yes, the, yes, the children. I, I mean, what's the motive yeah. look at the look yeah. at the, the motive for her. Why would she suddenly want to, to play this trick on it? it it's, it's taken it's, into the realm she's of not fantasy. She has not actually playing the trick. What, what's, what she, what's happened funeral. is she got caught up in this thing with, with Cody. And because of the, the nature of it, suddenly she's had to be taken away. If she survived the crash, she's had to be whisked away mm. into, into hiding, basically. Mm. I tell you who I didn't look too unhappy. What's that? Don't William Haig. <laughs> he never he's died, another Cheshire cat, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> another Cheshire cat. Yes, that's true. Did he video? Because he seemed a bit flippant. I mean, maybe it was no, my old poem of grief. I thought he she was dead. He seemed I a little wouldn't, flippant, didn't I he? I wouldn't say... Tony Blair but seemed again, sad, seemed upset, but William yeah, Blair seemed upset. Tony Blair, obviously, <laughs> he's got to play the part as well, hasn't mm. he? I mean, let's, let's face it, uh, uh, something like this, then all, all officials that are in the public eye have to play their part mm. as such. And I would think that the children would, in actual fact, be on this because, no, I mean, no how, old, how old are the two children? Uh, I mean, 11 and 12, 12, 12 and, and yeah, there's no way a child. 15, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And they followed their mother's coffin. A, t a child of 12 yes, they couldn't pretend followed she his wasn't own there. mother's coffin yeah. through the streets without a single show of emotion. Oh, mm. no, he showed mm. so much emotion by trying to keep in his pain. That was the whole point about it. He was a brave no, little no, chap. No, no, uh, yeah. 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 My mother died recently, things, and I, I think... didn't cry at the funeral because I wanted to do the best reading possible at her funeral. Mm. Do you oh, think that Pete's anthropological um, um, <laughs> observations are, are misplaced? <laughs> Regarding the bustling up of emotions at the funeral. Pete's anthropological. Yeah, what did I say? Anthropological. That's the right word. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know if you're a parent, but I'm a parent. Yes, I am. And, you know, my daughter of 15 wouldn't be able to pretend that, oh, it's okay, mum is safe somewhere. And for it to be a, a thing that she is in, in hiding for her life, for her, for her safety, they wouldn't be allowed to tell the relatives. That's the whole point about placement. Yes, but wouldn't, wouldn't we, we're not actually talking about normal children as such. I mean, but don't forget, they are children. These, these children, yes, okay, yes, these, they are children, Do you but think they are children that are brought up to act. No, no mother would put that onto in a, a child. child. Yeah. Yeah. In public. Yeah. John, you look I uncomfortable don't... at all of this. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think it takes a, a serious conversation about, about the possible assassination of the Princess of Wales into the realms of fantasy yeah. when we start talking yeah, about her yeah, pretending yeah. to, to yeah, you know, yeah. a death like Elvis or something like that. I think we, we, we haven't spoken much about... Uh, about Trevor Reese Jones in, in this yeah. discussion. I thought there'd be more more I think probably because he's still alive and basically you could get sued, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> he's a strange character and that his name is actually Trevor Reese or Trevor Jones and the Reese or the Jones part is from his wife. He's added it onto his own name to make a double barreled name. Now he, he's got a very unusual background. He's so young to have done so many things, to have been in the SAS, etc. And also, et uh, it was only a couple of weeks beforehand that Alf fired mm. hired him, didn't he? Exactly. He just fired the two. He just hired the two bodyguards. Mm. I mean, 
that was sort of now, odd. Now I've had a, a serious operation myself, and I've been on a, under anaesthetic, so I know how much it can impair the mm. memory. It doesn't impair the memory that much. So this man has got a responsibility, yeah. a duty to tell everybody what happened as much as he remembers. And I yes, suspect he's been he told not to. Amnesia is a, a recognised No, I know that it is yeah. a recognised thing. Disorder, but it's also yeah. but it's something you can work through because I did that myself. Now yeah. you can gain back a hell of a lot well, maybe of he forgotten will. stuff. Maybe but also maybe and, and it's very no. suspicious mm -hmm. that he's been hidden away by Al Fayed at uh, I don't know if it's well, Lanagowan Castle twice. in Scotland. But what, it was a, it was was a conspiracy made up of fundamentalist yeah. double agents. Yeah, I think they were on the same side. Yeah, yeah, let's exactly. say that there was an assassination plot from that direction. My, my opinion was, um, especially backed up by my own sources, yeah. that the British security and the French security knew about it yeah. and turned a blind eye. I don't think they actually caused it, that's my but, opinion. But mm -hmm. the point is, by turning a blind eye, they are part of it. Of course. Mm -hmm. but, I thought that, but I thought that if it was an attempt to stop Britain becoming a uh, Muslim nation, then surely the, the Islamic fundamentalists... I think that came into it, but I don't think yeah. it was the cause. Mm -hmm. I think when Diana went to Pakistan um, to meet Jemima Goldsmith, yeah. um, she did see the imman of um, Karachi, and she did talk to him quite quite well documented about um, becoming a Muslim, how difficult it would be, etc. Um, the British establishment, I think, especially the court, the royal court, uh, would have had kittens over mm. the fact that she had so much influence over William mm. that she just possibly could have persuaded him mm. to, to have become a Muslim too. Mm. <laughs> So surely the last, uh, surely the last people who'd want to kill Diana would would be the would be the uh, Muslims. Well, fundamentalists uh, are different. You know, they are they are extremists. Mm. And I am not saying that, that, that it was an, an extremist plot. I think it could well have been a Libyan plot. But the Libyans are the ones who who came out right at the beginning and said that it was a On murder the, conspiracy within minutes. You see, but then that was disinformation. <laughs> I mean, exactly. if you're following conspiracy theories, that was disinformation. Yeah. And I think there's been an awful lot of disinformation, one way or the other, throughout the whole thing, including the French um, courts, police, right. inquiries. John Stalker actually pinpointed about a hundred different ways mm. in which the British police would have, would have handled the inquiry differently. differently. Sure. And it was very convincing, mm. although he... Um, he dismissed all conspiracy theories. Right. But he does think she was assassinated. Well, he didn't in his he news. Read in the long piece. article. He mm -hmm. doesn't think it was an accident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John, does this tally with any of your investigations? I, I don't personally go along with uh, the the idea that the Muslim community in any in any at any level had a hand in, in the assassination. Yeah. No, I don't. I think there's ample reason to suspect that um, yeah, the, the, uh, some kind of joint British and U.S oligarchy, if you like, again to use that word, uh, perpetrated an, an assassination. And I think America and Britain are far more comfortable nations now at, at certain levels of, of high government that Diana is out of the way. Yeah. I well, think, if anything, Dodi was, was incidental, yeah. not the By other way, way around. By the way, the present government in the United States, uh, I think, has uh, been interestingly at odds with the British establishment on quite a number of issues of some strategic significance mm. and uh, if anything I could see the the, the, the the Clinton administration that's not to say certain rogue elements within our intelligence establishment in the US playing ball with a lot of the things that you're discussing but um, the, the Clinton administration has actually been uh, mm. rather noteworthy in uh, being uh, unenthusiastic or less than enthusiastic about the special relationship, even up to this recent uh, apparent love fest with Tony Blair sure. in Washington yeah. last yeah, week. I don't so. think it was a, a part of the Clinton faction, shall we say, mm -hmm. as we were talking earlier. They're very, it's definitely uh, the big sure. brother in America. Very, mm -hmm. It's very definitely divided, if you like, <coughs> between extreme right wing and a sort of liberal middle of the road, mm -hmm. Clinton-esque faction. I think it came from the right wing because I think uh, um, I mean, there was a meeting, wasn't there, between Diana and Clinton, not not too long so, before, mm -hmm. yeah, so when she. No, so, no, we could we could go on about this all night, but um, let's hope that this is the uh, the start of the floodgates being opened rather than the end. Um, so, thank you all very much. Thank, thank you. you. It's been a pleasure.